So, to kick us off, we have our first contestant, Marcia Goddard, who was actually the FameLab Netherlands champion this year and took part in the international final in Cheltenham in June. She describes herself as a passionate Dutch Trinidadian uh, from the lovely city of The Hague in the Netherlands. Um, her current research is focused on neural pathways to social dysfunction, so, for example, the autism spectrum disorder. Uh, I obviously first met Marcia at the Cheltenham International Science Festival, where she won many friends and much support, through, mainly through her fabulous little boy, Christian, who is not yet old enough to also roll his eyes at her other passions for horse riding, dancing, and playing the piano. I don't think she does those all at the same time. Let's kick off with Marcia Goddard. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Awesome. All right, that was just a, a silly kid song to break the ice. Um, it's probably not very hard for you to determine if I look happy or uh, pissed off. For example, should I clap my hands if I look like this? As easy as it may be for you to determine if I look happy or if I look pissed off, figuring out people's facial expressions can be a daunting task for people with autism. Neuroscientific research has shown that this problem might have something to do with the architecture of their brains. You can think of it as a, a highway interchange. A typically developing brain is like a very efficient interchange. Information about facial expressions merges into neural traffic and it takes the shortest route to the exit with the appropriate emotional label. Happy, sad, angry. The autistic brain, however, is tangled. It is a much more complicated interchange, full of roadblocks and dead ends. Information about facial expressions merges into neural traffic, but then it gets lost. It goes left, it goes right, it turns around, it tries again but it often ends up stranded without gas on the emergency lane, which can lead to these problems. Without treatment, that is. You see, people with autism are not crazy, and they're not dumb. They're just wired differently, and we might be able to use that knowledge to our advantage in treating these problems. Our research has shown, for example, that a subgroup of kids with autism use the frontal parts of their brains to label facial expressions, while other kids with autism do not. Even though they both have difficulties labeling facial expressions, and they both have autism, these two groups take very different routes on the neural highway towards those issues. Now, if we can use this knowledge, then we might be able to create treatment that is tailored to these individual differences in the brain's road network. For example, we can use exciting new techniques in brain scanning to train them to use more of the brain regions you and I use when we label facial expressions to see if it improves their skills. But whatever the method, individualized treatment might make it possible for us to create custom-made neural navigation systems that will allow people with autism to confidently tell you all that you look so happy right now, you should definitely clap your hands. Uh, thank you, Marcia. If anybody sees um, our overall facilitator, Carlos, waving his hand furiously, that only means that there's 30 seconds to go. If the contestants get tackled off the stage, that means their three minutes are up. Watch the heels do. <laughs> so um, it's now an opportunity for our, for our judges to ask questions of, of Marcia. Mary, do you want to start or whoever? I'd like to know the, what has inspired you to follow this, this uh, line of research. Um, well, uh, I'm a psychologist by training, and I did a minor in um, the brain, basically a brain minor, and I got to go um, cut into some brains, and that sort of made me fall in love with the brain, and in the end, it's just I got placed studying autism, but since I'm a psychologist and I'm interested in the brain, this is perfect for me, because I actually get to treat people, or I, I want to, if I get the money, want to treat people using the MRI scanner, which is a very new way to use the scanner, and I'm just very, very passionate about treating people and helping them. Right. 
Just mine, is it? Uh, Marcia, you were implying that there were different uh, uh, types of uh, autism groups. Yeah. Uh, and and what is the current thinking on the 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 the, the underpinning under underpinning uh, uh, understanding of that or reason for that? Well, there's mostly a lot of right now. <laughs> about the reason for that. That's why we're studying the brain right now. And I think they're focusing more on networks. We can't say, we can't put pe people in a scanner and say, oh, your amygdala is bigger, so you have this type of autism. It doesn't work that way. But we're looking at networks in the brain, and what we see is that they have a lot of social problems, but the routes towards those social problems, that's one of the things that I actually studied, is very different. But it's in terms of networks and not specific structures. Marcia, that was memorable, it was entertaining, it was passionate, Thank and you. it's focused on a big problem, so well done. Thank you. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> there is time for one more question, if there's a burning question, Mary, did you have another one? You no, know, it was an observation. I just wondered, um, during the Year of the Brain presentations in, um, at the Commission last year, um, there was an excellent presentation from one of the Dutch um, neuroscientists about um, getting the um, scan of somebody's brain on empathy, that the marrying up of the speaker with the listener. And they then showed that with the autistic person, there was just no light at all. I just wondered if you'd made a link, a, a connection with that work. more uh, right now on emotion and emotion regulation, so I'm a little bit of a different field, but um, I think that does exemplify exactly what I'm talking about. They're, they're different in the brain, and what I want to do is sort of highlight the differences within the spectrum, because there's a lot of differences in behavior, we already know that, but their brains also within the spectrum work very, very differently, so I think that's very important. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.